Hello, everybody. I'm back once again. God is still speaking through visions and dreams. Yes, he is. Jesus Christ is soon to return. We must be ready. Okay, you know, I'm trying to get off of this, but that's all right. I'll stay on it as long as God has given me to talk about it. My last video had to do with the LGBTQ PI plus uh, that was a lot more I could have said on that video um, but I didn't um, but I was sitting there thinking I was thinking uh and I believe the Lord spoke to me and said to talk a little bit about Ezekiel 1649. Ezekiel 1649. In Ezekiel 1649, it says this. Now, this was the sin of her of your sister Sodom. She and her she and her daughters were arrogant, overfed and unconcerned, they did not help the poor and needy. New Living Translation says, Sodom's sin, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, <clears throat> while the poor and the needy suffered outside the door. This is saying, the reason why the city or the community or, or the residents of Sodom fell into uh, homosexuality, <clears throat> sexual perversion, is because of pride and gluttony. I'm going to deal with those, those two, pride and gluttony. And the third one was laziness or idleness, uh, complacency. Okay, and they did not care for the poor. Pride, pride is the most damnable sin that you can commit. Every sin that you commit is committed under pride. Because pride tries to stand on its own and do its own thing. And the only thing that's outside, of, everything else outside of God is death, is sin, is darkness. Okay? So when a person is operating in pride, he's operating in death and destruction. The Bible said pride goes before the fall. In other words, pride parades itself. Pride is pompous. It, it parades itself. Walk down the street, showing off. Looks like they do in the in the gay parades, right? And they call it Pride Parade, right? The Bible says pride goes before. It comes before you see it coming, just like you see now with the with the uh, <clears throat> LGBT. I, I call them homosexuals. I don't call them LGBT because that's what they are: homosexuals and lesbians. Sodomites. But just like the LGBT, you see them coming, parading themselves. See, the Bible said love, the God kind of love, the God, the kind of love that God wants us to have, it don't parade itself. Humility doesn't parade itself. Love is humble and in and, and humility. And, and it's humble. It doesn't parade itself. I know the LGBTs are one of their favorite sayings is uh love is love. No. No, love, not that kind of love. Love doesn't parade itself, and it certainly doesn't parade pride. And that's what they do. They parade pride, which is another abomination. These people, every time they make a move, it's in the wrong direction. Every time they make a move, it's in the wrong direction. Here they are parading pride. The Bible said Sodom's sin or Sodom's downfall or Sodom's 
big mistake or Sodom's, uh, the thing that caused Sodom, the city of Sodom to sin was pride. Boy, boy, boy. Look, you, you know, these people, this is what they're doing. They're doing this to God. This is what they're doing. Then they're taking their finger and trying to stick it in his eye. This, that's what, actually, that's what they're doing, in a sense. That's what they're doing. They're going to take the rainbow. The rainbow is a symbol of his promise. That says, I will not destroy the earth again with water because of man's sin. Okay, man was sin, he sinned real bad. So God flooded the earth, destroyed them all, except for a few, and he put in the sky the rainbow to show as a as a sign of his promise. These people are gonna go get the rainbow. They're going to go get the rainbow. They're going to put it on display, wave it around, commit every abominable act that a human being could commit. They're going to take the rainbow that God gave us as a promise not to destroy or punish man with fire, the entire race like that. They're going to go get the rainbow and wave it in God's face. And then commit a bump, then commit pride, which is the worst sin of all. Pride is the worst sin of all. Yes, this is worse than homosexuality. See, that's 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 abomination after abomination after abomination. Boy, these people are in trouble if they don't get right. They are in some serious trouble. Okay, but I want to say to everybody out there, if you, if you, if there's a uh, lesbian or homosexual in your family, you know, love them, be nice to them, don't, don't treat them bad because they're gay, you know, but you better, you better know where to draw, the, where to draw the line at, because I'm not siding with them, I'm not agreeing with that degenerate life life of decadence. I'm not I'm not agreeing with it at all. Okay? But this was a sin, this was a, the iniquity of Sodom was pride. And here these people parading pride. And parading uh, oh 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 look, look another thing it says the second sin was gluttony. Gluttony, gluttony. Listen. Did you know that if you control your appetite, listen, if you're dealing with homosexuality, same-sex attraction, here's a scripture telling you how to deal with it, okay? There's four things it says It says that, that cause this problem. Pride, gluttony, laziness, and unconcern about the poor, or about the needs of others, okay? Stay out of pride. Stay out of pride. Don't parade pride. God hates pride. The Bible said God hates pride. Okay? God hates pride. Stay out of pride. There's only one thing, one virtue. Okay, in the kingdom of God that can handle pride. And that's love. You have to walk in love to destroy pride. If you want to destroy pride and not let pride take you over, you got to walk in love. Okay? Love and pride does not, can't walk together. They don't agree. Humility and pride does not agree. When you're walking in love, you're going to walk in humility. And you can't walk in humility without walking in love. Pride and humility and love, pride and humility does not agree. 
if you want to come successfully combat pride, walk in love. Okay? Walk in love. All that is in the world, the Bible said, is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. If you want to successfully eradicate pride in your life, walk in love and humility. 1 Corinthians 13 says, this is what 1 Corinthians 13 says, says love is patient. We know pride is not patient. Love is kind. We know pride is not kind. Love does not envy or boast. We know pride boasts. We know pride envy. Pride is jealous. Right? And it says, it is not, love is not proud. It's not arrogant. Love is not arrogant. It is not proud. It is not, it does not dishonor others. Or it is not rude to others. Okay? It is not rude. It is not self-seeking or it does not insist on its own way. It's not selfish. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, easily irrit irritated. It keeps no record of wrongdoings. This is love. Pride cannot stand against love. It says love does not delight itself in evil, but rejoices in the truth. We know these people rejoice in evil. They delight in evil. We know that. They, they, de they delight in evil. They rejoice at wrongdoings. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Okay? If you want to combat the, the sin of Sodom, their downfall, the first thing caused their downfall was pride. And the way that you can combat pride is with love and humility. That's the only way you're going to combat pride. It's through love and humility. The pride of life. Okay? The second thing the Bible said that caused Sodom to fall into perversion is uh, gluttony. Overeating. Overeating. Fullness of bread. Overeating. Now, I must confess, I'm working on that right now. Okay? I'm working on that right now, man. I, I'm trying not to eat more than what I need. Okay? It's a miserable feeling anyway when you overeat. It used to, I used to, uh, when I, I used to lay down on a full stomach and it made me sleep better. Made me sleep better. But now when I lay down on an over, over, uh, overfilled stomach, it's miserable. I can't sleep that good. When Adam and Eve ate excessively, God told them you can eat anything you, you want in this garden. Anything you wanted. Anything they wanted, they could eat it. He said, but that tree right there, don't eat it. Okay? If they they want they could eat anything in that garden they wanted that was that would not have been excess excess, but when they went to the garden that Christ told them the God told them not to eat of, that was excessive. They didn't even need that, and they ate it. And then the Bible said their eyes were open. The word eyes is fountain. Their fountains were open. And I think the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe, or Proverbs. Fountain, when it talks about the woman's 
your wife's fountain or your husband's, the man's fountain is talking about the sex organs. Their sex organs were open. They had an orgasm. That's what happened. Their eyes, when they had an orgasm, when they had that orgasm, their attention went to their nakedness. The Bible said they knew they were naked. This word knew is the same word for sex. The same word, knew. They knew they were naked. That's like they, they're saying they had sexual intercourse. That's that's what they're saying. It said, it said that, uh, the scripture said, uh, Adam knew his wife. Cain knew his wife. And they conceived or they had a baby. Well, when Adam and Eve ate excessively, when you eat excessively, you're overfed, you overeat, you lose control of your sex organs. You lose control of your sexual passions. Okay? And this is why it's so important to get your appetite under control. The Bible said the sin, one of the, the second sin of Sodom, or the second fault of Sodom that caused them to sin was gluttony, overeating. When Adam and Eve ate, they had an orgasm. This is the reason why a lot of people said things. You know, you remember that you remember that Helter Skelter, uh, Charles de Manson. Well, Charles Manson and his followers went in someplace and they killed some people. And in the process of killing these people, they had one woman, they hung her up, hung her up somewhere. And while she was hanging, she was bleeding. And one of Charles Manson's uh, cronies, uh, followers, she took her finger and wiped the blood that was coming from their victim and she licked it and she tasted it. And she said, I had an orgasm when I did that. Yeah, because you know what? That was a forbidden fruit she, when she, that she tasted. That was a forbidden fruit. And see what happens, this is what y'all, this is what you got to understand. In the spiritual world, y'all, listen, in the spiritual world, this is why Jesus Christ says, if you look at a woman and lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her. See, in the spiritual world, here in the physical world, we are. I'm sitting here in the physical looking, talking at you, shaking my hand, talking. But in the spiritual world, I'm doing something else. We are multi, multi-dimensional beings. We occupy more than one dimension. You are not only here, you were made in the image and likeness of God, right? The Bible said we were made in the image and likeness of God. God occupies many different places at the same time. We do it too. We're just not cognizant, aware of these other dimensions. Not cognizant. We're not consciously or cognizant aware of it. But we're there. The, Sometimes we get these inclinations of other realms and other places. You know, we get like deja vu, okay? And we get these other little inclinations, like we get these little other sensations and we don't know where it comes from and you know, we don't have an explanation for it. It's because it's coming from the spiritual realm. You're in the spiritual realm. So in the spiritual realm, when that woman wiped her finger, in the physical realm, when she took her finger and licked her food, in the spiritual realm, she had sex with a, a fallen angel. She was having sex with a fallen angel. That's what the Bible said. If you look at a woman and lust after it in your heart, you have already committed adultery. In the spiritual realm, you commit adultery. You are literally Listen, listen, actually, literally having sex with somebody in the spiritual realm. When, when you lay down at night and you have a uh, wet dream, okay, you might not remember anybody you was with, but you wake up and you know you had a wet dream because you was actually with somebody. They wasn't in the physical, it was in the spiritual. And... The Bible said you have already committed adultery with that person. When this woman took her finger and, and licked that blood, in the spiritual realm, in the physical realm, she licked the blood. In the physical realm, here, here in this physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, she actually engaged in sexual intercourse with a spiritual being. 
and her physical body reacted to it. Because her physical body and her spiritual body is are one. They're one. Okay? And her physical body reacted to it. When Adam and Eve ate, they joined themselves with a spiritual being. Sexually. In the spirit. And their physical bodies reacted. They had an orgasm. See, there's there's those that believe that uh, Adam and Eve had sex with Lilith, this this demon woman named Lilith, and Eve had sex with the serpent. Well, something happened like that, and something like that happened because when Eve got pregnant, she produced good and evil. Okay? Because she took from the from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And she ate, she consumed. Okay? And that's what she produced. Her seed, one of her seeds came from the serpent. And one of her seeds were evil. The Bible says Satan was a murder murderer in the beginning. Who committed the first murder? Cain. He called the, the Lord called Satan a murderer. From the beginning. That was Cain. That was Satan's child. Cain was Satan's child. Okay. Because they ate excessively. Alright. You don't control your. Your. Uh, and see. Listen. Wow. This is the reason why. These homosexuals are acting all weird now. They are so weird because they're because of the seed that's in them. Well, you about I don't know if you notice the preachers are out there talking to them on the street. They start barking like dogs. There, 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 there. You see that? And that's what they stand there and do when the preachers talking to them. They start why? Because they have the they have the seed of a, a spirit of a dog. That's a seed of a dog in them. And now you see them, they got these masks on. They're wearing these masks and these demon masks and demon faces. Looking like demons and devils and weird creatures. Calling themselves cats and dogs. Because they have copulated. They have merged with sexually in the spirit realm with these type of spirits. And this is what they're, this is what is reflecting on them. This is what's showing on them, on the outside, in the physical realm. They have merged, they have had, they have merged and copulated with the spiritual. Okay? And so now they barking like a dog, because they've been with a dog spirit in the in the spiritual realm. They, they say, I'm a cat. Because they've been with some cat spirit in the spiritual realm. And this is what they're producing. Listen. Don't be surprised if these people started having demons. I mean, start literally birthing demons, I'm telling you. Don't be surprised if they start birthing some old weird creatures or something. The Bible said that the Antichrist, when he comes, when the man of sin comes, he's going to come with all deceivableness. All deceivableness. Don't be surprised. And see, this is what happens. This is what happened. When Adam and Eve ate, and when that uh, that lady, uh, Charles Manson follower, licked that blood, that was like a that was like a that was a forbidden fruit. And that spirit entered her and he took over her sex organs. In the spirit realm, man, you are doing all kind of things. I'm telling you, you're doing. That's why it's, it's very important. You got to be very careful what you say here in the physical. You got to be careful what you say and what you do here in the physical, because what you do in the spiritual is going. What you do in the physical is going to cause the spiritual to manifest in the physical. Okay, the words you speak. 
they are spirit. Okay? And you can release spirits out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm by the words you speak. So if you want to get control of your sex organs, if your sexual passions are driving you crazy and got you to want to do anybody, get control of your appetite. Okay? The Bible in Hebrew 12, 15 called Esau. Esau, remember Esau? Esau, um, he sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. The Bible said, God, I love Jacob, but I hate Esau. That's what it said. Jacob, I love Esau, I hate. The Bible also called Esau a fornicator. Now, Esau was married, though. He was married. But he ate. He, he, he gave up his birthright. He, he gave up everything for food. He didn't have control of his appetite. And God called him a fornicator. Okay? He might have been married, but he probably was still fornicating too. So a person who does not have control of their appetite, they don't have control of their sex organs. And this is the reason why it's so important to fast as often as you can. God also said that uh, there's a scripture in Jeremiah 5, 8. It, it talks about uh, the children of Israel being overfed. It said they were like wild horses. Every man after his neighbor's wife. Okay? Every man after his neighbor's wife. Jezebel. Revelation 2.20. Eating food sacrificed to idols. Committing fornication. Almost every place you see in the Bible where it talks about excessive eating or food, fornication is listed right with it or adultery, some type of sexual perversion. Just read, just check it out. Next time you read in the Bible and you see where uh, food or excessive eating is mentioned, sex, excessive eating and sex or fornication is mentioned right with it. You have to control your appetite. Destroy pride with love, get control of your appetite, you get control of your passions. Okay? If you're struggling with homosexuality or lesbianism, you're struggling with these sins, this is one way the Bible is letting you know that you can get control of yourself. Okay? And another way, of course, is to get married if you ain't married. Okay, to avoid, the Bible said to avoid fornication, you should get married. Okay. But um, as long as you're in this physical body, you're going to be tempted with it. Okay. So don't think you're going to completely rid yourself of carnal sexual passions. You just got to get it under control and keep it under control. All right? And one of the best ways to do it is control your appetite. The Bible said when they ate, they knew they were naked. Their attention, they notice their nakedness. Their attention went to their nakedness. Okay? So excessive eating, this is what excessive eating costs. Like I said, I'm working on mine. I'm working on mine. My control of my appetite. I like food, though. I like food. I like to eat. I need to eat. I want to eat. So, I mean, you got, that's a fight. That's a fight. And, you know, when I stopped drinking and stopped smoking and stuff, then I started eating more. Okay? I started eating more. So now, I'm, I'm working on getting this under control. Because if I don't, if we don't keep our bodies under control, it's going to control us. And this is the problem with these gays, man, these homosexuals. They, 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 they have lost control. They have lost control. 
they're out there barking like dogs, looking like cats, because they, that's the kind of demon that's, that's, that has gotten in them. That's the kind of spirit that has entered them. Okay? And the Bible said the third, that third problem was complacency, unconcern. Okay? Complacency, carelessness. Okay? So you have to be concerned, man. You got to be concerned about your life, about others, about what God wants. Okay? You can't just say you love God and that's it. You got to fear God. Obey Him. Okay? Follow His instructions. I'm giving y'all these instructions. I got to do it too. I got to do it myself. So, but I guess I'm going to end this video by saying, you know what? We are in a real mess here with this immorality. And... If you're being tempted with it, don't give in to that stuff, man. There's a way out. You don't have to be a gay. You don't. Have, you don't have to be no homosexual. Even if, even if you feel like you was born like that. Well, we all born sinners. Okay, all of us are born sinners. All right, but God told us to repent of our sins, repent of our sins, and turn to Him. The Bible said, "Draw nigh to Christ, and He will draw nigh to you." Resist the devil, and then he will flee from you. He will run from you. Okay? All right. That's all I got to say on this. Uh, yeah. All right. God is still speaking through visions and dreams. Yes, he is. Jesus Christ is soon to return. We must be ready.